Hey everybody, welcome back to Built Not Bought Campers and today we're back in the traffic and what we're going to be doing is fitting the diesel heater. Let's show you what's in the box first I think before we start doing anything. Right so we've got the diesel tank and inside the diesel tank a little plastic bag with all the fittings to fit it to the diesel tank. That's going to be pretty useless for us because we're not going to use that. We have the muffler. We have an instruction manual. Oh my god, it's in English. And other languages, but it's English. When I bought mine, mine come with completely Chinese instructions. And I couldn't read any of them. You have the mounting plate. Now you can buy a replacement on eBay, which has got a circular shroud on it. Especially if you're going through wood insulation and other materials that could be flammable. It protects that from the exhaust. I won't need that with this one, so I will be using the original plate. The good bit is the diesel heater. Then we have the fuel pump. And on the side of the fuel pump, you can't see it very well, I don't think, but there's an arrow facing that way. So it shows you the direction of the fuel, the fuel travels. Then we have the control unit. But this one is different to mine. It's got a remote control, but it's also got a digital display on it. So very nifty. You've got this green fuel hose. You have the exhaust hose. Oh, you have a T piece as well. And the ducting. So I'm assuming that T piece is if you want to um, direct it in two places. But the problem is, they only give you one. vent okay never mind because we only need one on this anyway you have the wiring harness and it's foolproof absolutely foolproof you have the air intake hose and then we have the air filter fuel filter and a whole bunch of other gubbins and bits and pieces. There's the fuel pump, clamp, mount. It gives you everything you need. Right, my aim is to put the heater under the driver's seat and it's gonna be located over this side. Now, I know there's enough height for the heater to go once I've cut the floor out. So I need to cut a chunk of floor out here for the heater to slot into because it's quite thick flooring. The best possible side is here for the location underneath the van. Now what I need to do is I need to draw the marker pen here and back where there's this bar is at the back. So I need to draw those two lines so at least when I fit the heater it won't foul the seat when I put the seat base back in. There. Along the back. Right, so once I take the seat out, I know exactly where I need to be with that. So there we have it. And if you can see the mark where the seat was. So I now know that's not going to fail either side of the seat so I'm going to mark where the unit is going to be placed right what I'm going to do before I start drilling because there's wires under here I'm going to cut this bit of mat out
just so you can see there's wires there and before I started drilling anything I needed to be sure that I wasn't going to hit any wires so the unit will sit in there like so plenty of room right so what I'm going to do from there I'm going to tip it sideways slightly and mark two points of work and drill so I'm going to drill there and I'm going to drill there I'm going to drill two little pilot holes where I've made those marks and I'm going to drill one there first just a tiny one just to make sure that when I go underneath, I'm not going to hit any chassis rails, any major components that I can't access, put the pipes on or anything. So let me get a drill and we do that. I'm going to leave the drill in there. I'm going to take you underneath and show you where the drill's popped out. Right, so there's the drill and there's plenty of space around it so i know i think the other one's in front of it here so i'm going to miss this wire we'll drill a hole there as well and then we'll work out how big a square we need to cut out remember when you use any air tool at all i'm totally didn't know it make sure you wear your gloves and you wear your goggles right so Gonna give the underside a quick spray with that hi everybody and welcome back to the second day of installing the diesel heater um, just to recap we've cut the hole in the floor we've treated the bare metal so it doesn't rust and we're ready now to install the plate um, and all the pipe work on the heater itself <laughs>
Under normal circumstances, this wire, before this plate goes on, would be fed through this little hole here, from here and under the vehicle, to plug into the fuel pump. That's what that hole is there for, apparently. Now, I always have the fuel pump outside, no matter what anyway, because of the clicking noise. Now, instead of feeding it through that hole, the reason I cut this so far back near the line of this, I'm gonna feed this down through there. I know I've got cut metal, but what I've done is I've got a little bit of hose, and I've cut that hose down the center there. So I've fed that wire through that piece of hose. Right, so now that tubing is protecting this wire as it goes underneath the van. It's just something I like to do. Right, for the fuel hose, got these little spring clips. So you put one of them on first. And squeeze, what should I say? So push the fuel hose on as far as you can get it down the fuel pipe. And <clears throat> so this side is the air intake. Place the Jubilee clip on there. And push that down as far as it goes. Less chance of leaks, I say. Right, so that's on there securely. Now all we got to do is feed this all down through there. <laughs>
There you go, nice and solid. I'm not going anywhere. <clears throat> and that's secure inside that tubing. Pull that through a bit. And then what will happen is that will plug into that plug. So that big, it's foolproof. All the plugs are different, you can't get it wrong. There's a fuse holder, there's your earth, there's your live. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a terminal on the end of that. I'm gonna secure it to this plate because this chassis is a good point to earth it to. I'm gonna clean underneath that. Um, should have done that before I put this on. And then this one, this plug this in, goes straight to your controller. So that, we'll put that way, because it's gonna to go to the back somewhere. That one, I'll tell you what, let's put all these down. Right, so there you go. <coughs> nicely fitted into the floor the seat will cover that it's the best place to put this because it's such a small van you want to maximize every little bit of space you can I suppose you could put, probably put it over the passenger side but I'm not too sure about that I wanted it over this side driver side um, and I'm happy with it hi everybody welcome back we're on day two of the diesel heater install I had to break off from it yesterday because we had a little problem with the uh, traffic um, sometimes it starts sometimes it doesn't now we've had to completely rip the front end off but um, let that, forget that for now we're going to go back on the diesel heater install um, and I'm going to try and video as much as I can one it's very windy outside although it's making me look a liar now there you go the shutters are rattling like mad I'm going to put obviously I'm underneath the vehicle today so I'll get as much on video as I can um, I'll give you a little bit of music to listen to while I'm doing it um, because I'm not going to be talking very much I'm just going to be installing it once it's installed and finished I'll run through the underneath of it and give you a little bit of a tour of what I've done how I've done it and why I've done it so anyway let's get on with it So that exhaust is now secure on the outrigger and it goes over the top of the main van exhaust and then it goes up to the diesel heater there. Hi everybody and welcome back to the diesel heater installation. Um, more to the point I've actually installed it. Um, it was difficult to try and film underneath. I think I got a little bit under there but um, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to give you a tour from the underneath of the vehicle, 
and I'm going to show you exactly what I've done, reasons behind why I've done it, and I'll explain everything as I go along. But first of all, I'm going to show you the inside. Uh, I've actually got the heater wired up to the main van battery for now because the leisure batteries have not been fitted, or leisure battery, should I say. Um, so let's have a look and let me tell, you, tell me what you think. Right, so there that is the heater is installed underneath the seat of the vehicle where I plan to put it and that's where it is going to be. And it's in there solid. Right, excuse the mishmash of wiring around here. As you can see, it's a bit. Right, as you can see, the actual screen is alight. So it is working. And I, what I've done is I've run a link wire from there over to the live on the heater. So yeah, so the seat will sit over the top of here, so it's given us utilising space, plenty of space on the um, van itself. So that's not going to take up unnecessary space in the back of the van. And let's go underneath the van and I'll give you a quick tour of everything under there. Also, because I'm going under the vehicle, I'm going to be safe because lots of dirt, rubbish and crap under there falls down, gets in your eyes. I know I've done it. It was happening to me while I was under there fitting the th that damn thing. So yes, I always wear these when I go underneath anything now. So, And again, when you're going underneath a vehicle, especially if you jack it up, be very safe. Use axle stands. And let me show you. I have one there holding it in the air. Right, so that's the muffler and it protrudes out the side of the van. It doesn't need to. And I've attached it to one of these outriggers. But in a future build, you may see me move it. Not too sure yet. I have a reason for the move because something else is being attached to the vehicle and it may need this space here. Um, the exhaust for the diesel heater is bent and goes over the top of the main exhaust. It gives plenty of room. It's not going to knock on it. So that's not a problem. Right, so there's the underside of the diesel heater. All, uh, all that grey stuff around the outside is heat resistant sealant up to 1200 degrees. Um, this black conduit here is covering the diesel hose. So, and the diesel hose, it comes out of the diesel heater and goes up and coils back and goes then goes through the fuel pump there, which comes down then to a fuel filter. And what we've done is we've tapped in to the diesel return line on the main tank. So this is a little hack. On the Traffic's Vivara's Prima Stars, you'll see the two pipes. If I show you these pipes here, you follow this big one at the top. That is your main fuel line into the engine. And this smaller one here is the return pipe back to the tank. Now this fuel line, smaller fuel line, drops down into the tank about three quarters of the way. So I've basically used that as a pickup pipe to supply diesel for the heater. Now, you know if you leave your diesel heater on, it's not going to run the tank dry because it'll leave you with a quarter of a tank left. So, if you see along here, just, if you see just there, I've put in a T-piece. So, yeah, there's the T-piece. It connects the main hose lines back up and then brings me a feed off, which then goes up into the fuel, fuel filter, which then goes up into the fuel pump. And then comes all the way around this pipe here. The reason I've got the pipes along, it says you need a metre and a half worth of fuel pipe. So I wanted to cover that in conduit, that bit especially, because it was so long. And if anything flicks up, there's a chance that it could split the pipe. I know this is not protected down here, but at least a smaller piece of pipe to fit. And I'm going to keep an eye on it. But I just felt safer by putting some conduit on that and then I've cable tied it to the fuel lines right 
There's the air intake filter which goes round and then back up into the heater. And the wire comes out from up top there. Goes along there and then into the fuel pump. So this is the setup that I've got for the diesel heater underneath the van. And I'm happy with it. It's safe. And it's the best I could possibly do when I was fitting the heater. But I'm happy. Um, I've run the heater up. I'm going to run it up again. Hopefully you'll be able to hear it. I know you won't be able to see it or anything, but you'll be able to hear it. And you'll be able to see the monitor running as it is running. And I'll even put the camera back under here so you can hear the fuel pump clicking as well. So let's go and fire it up. Right, so there you go. It's running at full power now. Don't know if you can hear the fan running beside us. And if you see on the screen, it's at 34 degrees. You can set the degrees by that. Going up and down. This is set high at 35, so I could get all these lights up and showing you it in full, full swing. That's the muffler going. Hopefully you heard the clicking of the pump. That's why I always install my pumps outside. According to the manufacturers of these heaters, you can also install these outside, but they do say provide a splash guard. So some sort of box or something, but again, I prefer the heater inside, but the fuel pump, the fuel filter, and all the fuel hose, I always keep outside. If I did use a tank inside the vehicle, I would make sure that fuel hose still runs outside and it would come up through the floor in a hole right next to the tank. You don't want to get diesel in your vehicle. To show you my reasons why I prefer to have an outside tank or minimal chances of a fuel spillage inside the van. I do have another method if I have to put the diesel tank inside the van. But what I'm going to do now, I'm going to explain how I do it, what, what I do. I'm going to show you on my own van. Do you know, I was just thinking, we could call this diesel heater fuel tanks 101. No, let's be serious about this. Right, let me show you my setup in my little beast Covey. You're wondering why I called it Covey. Let me show you. So this is the front panel, which has come off of there. Now the front panel, as you know, it's an Iveco. I-V-E-C-O. That's where the name Covey for my van come from. And I felt a little bit awkward when Covid come out. Because yeah, but no, nope, this was named way before this pandemic. Anyway, so yeah, this is going to be the front end of my vehicle. Um, it's going to get a paint job. And I'm going to explain that quick as well while I'm here. I'm a little bit upset. So I bought some paint. And I started to paint the front end. And as you can see, it used to be white. Now it's cream. So they say it's light grey. To me it's bloody cream. So yeah, we start to work on it and most upset. And even when you come around here, there's no difference in seeing the colour. So anyway, less that back to diesel tanks. Right, so there is my diesel tank. Now it's quite funny because Mel from Mel's Van World, he uses the same sort of tanks. Um, the reason I use this, I had quite a big flat tank with mine, come with mine. Similar to that, but it had three holes in it, it was quite large. And it, to me, it wasn't safe, not safe at all. So what I've done with this, I've replaced it, strapped this in, and the fuel hose, you can't see it comes up through the floor right next to the tank, but it's not gonna get chopped off or anything stupid like that and it comes up and it goes to a pickup pipe which goes down into the tank it's a vented lid on it so there's no vacuum right so with the diesel heater for the traffic came this one now if i take the lid off
Right, so here is your fuel. You give you two screws, two washers and two rubber washers to screw through them holes or create the holes and attach it, say, somewhere like that. Then, this here goes through a hole wherever you drill it down the bottom here and that will poke out say at the side or at the bottom and you would screw this on from the outside in fact those rubber washes I tell a lie is for that one either side of that so one goes on there and then that gets fed through a hole which you can drill anywhere on these there's no specific points located on these tanks um, so if you have it there you could have it there at the bottom it, wherever you like, but it's got to be at the bottom for the fuel to get into it. So, imagine you've got your tank up there with a fuel pipe coming down out of here. Or if it's close to the floor, you throw something in the back of your van, even if you've got it in the back of your van, and you break that off, your nice full tank of diesel is ending up over your lovely, lovely van. And if you've ever tried to take the smell of diesel out of anything, you will realise it's not easy. So the last thing you want is 10 litres or 5 litres of diesel floating around in your van. So anybody out there saying, oh, I shouldn't have done it the way I've done it, shouldn't have done that, shouldn't have done this, that's why I've done it. So I want to explain to you exactly why I chose to run that diesel heater off the fuel return pipe on the traffic and why I've installed that tank in my van. And it's not just me, Mel from Mel's Van World, he, he has, he, he's got exactly the same opinion on it. And no doubt there's probably a hundred other people out there or hundreds of other people out there got the same opinion. But so the tanks that you get with the kit, don't throw them away, keep them. They could be used as water tanks. You know, use them for anything. You could use them for something else. You know, wastewater, a small wastewater tank. Anyway, whatever it is, they could be used. They don't have to be used for diesel. Personally, I definitely wouldn't use them for diesel. Right, so that's my heater install completed. That's the next phase of the project done. Happy with that. I hope you're happy. I hope you're staying well. I hope you're staying safe. Leave the comments below. Any questions at all, ask. Bye for now.